Let's take a look at the Poisson distribution. This is a discrete probability that applies occurrence of some event over a specified interval. Uh, discrete, uh, no decimals. And um, specifically, the, um, the distribution we're talking about here um, in, involves infinity. So keep that in mind. That's a big difference between that and binomial. Now here's our formula for it. <clears throat> X is the number of occurrences of event over some interval. Uh, occurrences must be random, independent, and uniformly distributed over the interval. <coughs> Excuse me, over interval being used. Now the mu, that u with an extra line, uh, that's our mean. And um, I got this formula here. This is out of a different book. And they say the mean is lambda times t. Um, I've seen other books that just say the mean is lambda. Uh, either way, to find the mean, so you can think of just in general as a mean, uh, involves taking uh, uh, lambda times t, where lambda would be uh, the average per a unit of measure of some sort. And t would be the number of those units of measure. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say that you're, you can take an average of um, five calls per hour. Lambda, in this situation, would be five. Now, if I ask you uh, about over a two-hour time frame, then T would be two. So you'd have 10 times two. If, for example, I told you that the, uh, the average, um, average calories eaten per day, is 1,000. Lambda would be 1,000 is per day. And then I, if I ask you over five days time, T would be five. So you'd multiply 1,000 times five. Uh, so that's kind of built in when you're when you're talking about it. Again, that lambda would represent uh, the average per some kind of unit of measure. And T is how many of those units of measure we have. Okay, so our two different functions we have is uh, D P O I S D Poisson. Um, that's Poisson, of course, and D. Um, this finds that exactly one value. You pass in your X and you pass in your mean. Mean oftentimes is already calculated, um, or if they don't calculate it, you have to figure it this way. The uh, P Poisson, um, that's um, your cumulative. So it'll add up all the probabilities from 0 up to and including x. And then you put your mean in as your second parameter. Okay. Now to find uh, probabilities, you first identify the average number of occurrences of the event in some interval, like um, uh, lambda, and number of intervals. And again, uh, I know this book we're currently in, lambda is actually meant to be the mean or expectation. Um, so you probably don't have to do step one or even step two on that, but step two, we want to calculate the mean of the distribution and you take the, um, the average number of occurrences in some interval times the number of intervals. Step three, list the X values problem entails and rewrite with inequality slash equality symbols and use the table on the following slide to determine how to enter the, the function. And, um... You see here, we've got probability of x equals a, then use the d Poisson, um, and then a, and then our mean. If it's x is less than or equal to a, use the p Poisson, and then a, and then the mean. Probability of x is greater than or equal to a is 1 minus p Poisson, a minus 1, mu sub x. And if it's between two values, use p Poisson, a b, mean, minus p Poisson, a minus 1, and then the mean. Okay, so let's look at an example. And this is comments here. And this is the Poisson distribution. And the average per interval it tells us is 2. This would be like maybe I could handle 2 calls per hour. The number of intervals 
is going to be t, which is 5. This would be like um, looking, um, examining over a five-hour time period. So I can handle two calls per hour, and I'm, I'm examining uh, uh, over five, uh, five hours. So our mean is going to equal to the average per interval times the number of intervals. So that's going to give us... Uh, let's see, 2 times 5, which gives us 10. Okay, so our first one here. We want to find exactly 8. Okay, so I come up here. Um, we've already done the first two steps. Uh, step three, list the x values the problem entails and rewrite with inequality or equality symbols. Well, exactly eight means x equals eight. And this is already a, a inequality, or inequality, equality. Step four, use a table on the phone slide to determine how to enter the function. It's of this form. x equals a uh, number. So a is going to be the number that follows or equals. So on this problem, a would equal 8. So that tells us we're going to use uh, d uh, Poisson. And then we put in a. a was 8, comma, and then our mean, which was 10. Okay, so if we run that, that'd give us our probability. Now b. I'm looking at the probability of less than 17. I won't keep flipping back, but um, we need to list out all the x values. Poisson starts at 0 and goes up. And then um, less than 17 means it does not include 17. So I'm going to go up to 16. Now, we want to rewrite that in terms of equality or inequality. That'd be x is less than or equal to 16. That is this form right here, less than or equal to. And a would be whatever follows our less than or equal to symbol. So a equals 16. So that says we're going to do the p poisson. And we'll pass in uh, A, which is 16, comma, and then our mean, which we said was 10. And that'd give us that probability. C. We're finding the, what are we finding? Uh, C is um, at most 12. By the way, these are handling all the possibilities. First one was equal to, second one was less than, this one's a less than or equal to. So we're going to write out the x values that entails. So it starts at 0, 1. At most, 12 includes 12. Rewrite this in terms of inequality, and that's x is less than or equal to 12. So this is the same as the one we just did. The less than or equal to, or A is going to be what follows our less than or equal to symbol. And P Poisson, uh, 12, comma, 10. And I run that, and that'd be my probability. Okay, D. Probability um, more than 20. I'm going to be here a long time writing out all these possibilities. More than 20 means it does not include 20. It's more than 20. So 21, 22, actually on to infinity. Um, so I'll just put three little dots there. You might say, well, infinity doesn't make sense. Yeah, but we treat it as, in, as it's infinity. Now, obviously, you can't, if this was number of calls, you can't have an infinite number of calls. 
if this was the number of customers, you obviously can't have an infinite number of customers, but we've treated that way. So from a number on up is greater than or equal to. So rewriting this with inequality, that'd be x is greater than or equal to 21. This is this form right here, x is greater than or equal to. And then whatever is to the right of the greater than or equal to is our a. So a is going to equal 21. Now, how it tells us to input that in is 1 minus p poisson, uh, a minus 1. a is 21, so 21 minus 1, or you can put 20 in there. And then our mean, which we said was 10. And that would be our answer. Okay, E. Uh, what is E? At least 25. So, if I write that out, that'd be 25, 26, on forever. Which, if I rewrite that with inequalities, that's X is greater than or equal to 25. So, A is going to equal to 25. Same formula as the last time, the greater than or equal to, so we're going to plug it into this. So we've got 1 minus p, uh, p poisson, um, a minus 1, so 25 minus 1, comma our mean, which is 10. Run that. Remember, this is scientific notation. That's times 10 to the negative 5 power which means you move your decimal place five places left. So it's point zero 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 four six nine four nine three eight. And last one. Um, between 10 and 20 inclusive. So between 10 and 20 inclusive. Inclusive means it includes those values. So... It's going to be x equals 10, 11, dot, 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 all the way up to 20. There's my dogs playing in the background. Now, when I rewrite this as inequality, it goes from one number up to another number. That's my last case here. So we're going to rewrite that as 10 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 20. Now, a is what's before the less than or equal to, and b is what's at the end. A is our smaller number, so A is 10, and B is 20. And we're going to plug it into this formula here. So, P Poisson, um, B, B was 20, comma, our mean, which is 10, minus P Poisson, A minus 1. So, 10 minus 1, and then our mean. And we'll run that. And that gives us uh, our probability there. And that's how you figure uh, probabilities using the Poisson distribution in the R programming language.